when shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly burly is done, when the battle's lost and won. That will be the air of the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with my best. There is foul and foul is fair. Hover to the top and to the air. One bloody man is bad. He can report as soon as by his plight the revolt of the new estate. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, great friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood as two spent swims that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for to that the mount implying villainies of nature to swarm upon him. From the western isles of kerns and gallow glasses is supplied in fortune on his damned quarry smiling showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandished steel which smoked with bloody execution like valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave which never shook hands nor bade farewell to him until he unseamed him from the nave to the chops and fixed his head upon our battlements. O valiant cousin, worthy gentleman, so well thy words become thee as thy wounds, they smack of honour both. Go get him, surgeons. Who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross. What a haste looks to his eyes. So should he look that seems to speak things strange. Whence comest thou, worthy Thane? From five great king, where the Norwegian banners flood the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself with terrible numbers assisted by that most disloyal traitor. The Thane of Cordor began a dismal conflict till that Bologna's bridegroom lacked in proof confronted him with self-comparisons point against point, rebellious arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! Hmm. No more that pain of Cordo shall deceive our bosom entrance. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet Macbeth, when he hath lost noble Macbeth and won. I'll see you done. So fair and foul a day I've not seen. How far is it called the forest? What are these? So withered and so wild in their attire. They do not look like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on it. Live you or are you that made me question? Speak if you can, what are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee. Thane of Cordor. Oh, hail Macbeth. That shall be king hereafter. Good sir. Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are you fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly you show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble heaven and of royal hope. 
that he seems wrapped with all. To me, he speak not. If he can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beck nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail, lesser than Macbeth in greater. Hail, not so happy, yet much happier. Hail, thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail. Stay you imperfect, speakers tell me more. A sound of death, I know I'm pain of glamis, but how of Cordor, the pain of Cordor lives. A prosperous gentleman, and to be king, stands not within the prospect of Lee. The more than the Cordor, as in those winds, the old strange intelligence of why upon this blasted heap you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you! Who's such? things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And then of Cordo too, when it not so. To the self same tune and words. Who's here? The king had happily received when Beth, the news of thy success, and when he reads thy personal winter in the rebels' fight, his wonders and his praises do contend which should be thine or his. Silence with that, in viewing over the rest of the self same day, he finds thee in the stout Norwegian ranks, nothing afeard of what thyself didst make strange images of death. As thick as hail came post with post, and every one did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defence and poured them down before him. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee, Pain of Cordor, which in addition hail most worthy thine, for it is thine. What? The devil speak true. The Thane of Cordor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? For was the Thane that lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Now whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did lion rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both he laboured in his country's wreck, I know not. But treason's capital, confessed and proved and held with Tronin. Glamis, and Thane of Cordor. Greatest is provided. Thanks for your praise. Your children shall be kings. And as that gave the thing of Cordon to me, promised from yesterday. Their trusted home might yet enkindle you into the crown, besides the thing of Cordon. That is strange, and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instrument of darkness tells us truths, win us with honest trifles, and betray us in the deepest consequence. Cousins, a word I pray you. You too shall not tell me as happy for us to be swelling at the victory of the king. This supernatural sensible cannot be told, cannot be told. For the old I had it given me earnest of success, convincing in the truth, and pain of Cordor. The good. Sedition and his heart image doth and fix my hand, make my seated heart, not at my ribs against the news of nature. Thus it fears a less than call me madness. My thought was murder, yet his open testicles such as my own single state of man, that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what it's not. Look, how a palm is wrapped. New honours come upon him, like our strange garments, cleave not with the mould, but with the aid of use. 
time in the hour of undisputed records today. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me a favor. My dull brain was rocked with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the need to read them. Let us walk the king. Think upon what had chanced, and in more time than entering having waited, let us speak of three hearts each to another. Very gladly. Is execution done on Cordor, or not those in commission yet returned? My leash, they are not yet come back, but I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, and implored your highness pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one that has been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed. As it were, a callous trifle. Hmm. There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. Hmm. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Oh, worthiest cousin! The sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Thou art so far before that swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. Who thou hadst less deserved that the proportion of both thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. Service from the loyalty I owe, and doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do, and what they should, by doing everything safe towards your life and honour. Welcome hither. I have begun to plan thee, and will labour to make thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, thou hast no less deserved, nor must be known, nor less to have done so. Let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart. Day far well. The harvest is your own. My plenteous joys, wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. <laughs> Sons, kinsmen, saints, and you whose places are the nearest. No, we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. Whose honor must, not unaccompanied, invest him only. But signs of nobleness shall shine on all deserves, from hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. The rest is labour which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Cordor. The Prince of Cumberland. That is his weapon which I must fall down in the words. For me. For in my way of darkness, stars, patch your fires, let not lights in my black and deep desires, thou meet by the hand, let that be which thou fears, when it is done to sin. True, worthy Banquo, is full so valiant, and in his commendations I am fat. It is a banquet to me. 
met after him, whose care has gone before to bid us welcome, it is a peerless kinsman. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the prophetess report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned and desired to question them further, they made themselves air, into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cordor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me, and referred me to the coming on of time with Hail King that shall be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness. Thou might not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay to thy heart and farewell. Glass thou art, and Cordor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, thou wouldst thou wholly, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou wouldst have great glance, that which cries, thus thou must do, thou have it and that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishes should be undone. Hardy hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round which faith and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him? Who would so would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. A thane is coming. One of my fellows hath the speed of him who almost dead for breath, and scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tender. He brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse that croaks the fatal engines of Duncan under my battles. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctuous visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breast and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's machine. Come thick night and pour thee in the dullest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, Hold, hold. Great glance, worthy Cordor, greater than both, by all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight, and when goes hence, tomorrow, as he purposes. 
or never shall some that quarrel see. Your face, my thing, is as a book where men may read strange patterns. To be of time, look like time. They're welcome in your eyes. Your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business in my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give. So we suddenly swing on master time. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest you need.